Hello everyone and welcome to this very special episode of Draw with Rob. With me, Rob Biddle. There I am in my studio. Right, I am a children's author and illustrator. You might have seen some of my books before. Have you seen this one? It's called Odd Dog Out. Probably my most popular picture book. It's all about the sausage dog here who doesn't fit in with the other sausage dogs. So she goes off in search of a place where she does fit in and in the process of that, she learns, do you know what? Doesn't matter about fitting in, the most important thing is to be yourself. I'm very proud of that book. Maybe you've seen my chapter books. Have you seen them? They're called the Peanut Jones books. The Peanut Jones, well, it will be a trilogy. There's only two out at the moment. That's because I'm still doing the third one. I'm just working, just putting the finishing touches to the illustrations of book three at the time of recording. But I'm super proud of these books, as you can see. Lots and lots and lots of illustrations in these books. It's a really, really fun adventure. It's all about, it's all about um, a girl, Peanuts, whose dad is missing, okay? But then one day she finds a pencil and she realizes that it's a magic pencil. Everything she draws with this pencil becomes real. So she draws a door one day and it leads to an illustrated city. And she thinks maybe that her missing dad is somewhere in this illustrated city. So it tells of all her adventures throughout the illustrated city and her search for her dad super fun but we are here today as per usual to do a drawing together of course we are and now do you remember at the top of this episode I said that it was a very special episode and that is true because we are I am recording this about two weeks two or three weeks before the coronation of King Charles III which is happening on the 6th of May 2023 so I thought I should draw something to celebrate this momentous occasion in the history of the United Kingdom, which is where I live. Now, what could I draw? I thought I could draw a picture of the king, show you all how to draw the king. But then I thought, actually, what is at the center of the coronation? Now the clue is in the name coronation. It's all about the crown, right? So then I thought, right, I am gonna show you all how to draw the actual crown that King Charles will be crowned with. Now that crown is this one, and it is called St. Edward's Crown. And it is the centerpiece of the crown jewels. If you, I think you can see it. If you go to the Tower of London where the crown jewels are on display, you can see it there. And it's probably the most famous crown in the whole world, and isn't it beautiful? And do you know what? I think this is gonna be a lot of fun to draw. Would you like me to start off by telling you a few facts about this crown? Shall I? Okay, right. Well, it's called St. Edward's Crown. It's named after St. Edward the Confessor. Now, he was the first person to be crowned with St. Edward's Crown, but it's not actually this one, because I think that was about 900 or maybe even a thousand years ago, so it doesn't exist anymore, the original. But this one is kind of a replica almost, and this one was made for the coronation of King Charles II. Uh, in 1661 so it is very very old this is like 400 years old nearly um, and it's I can tell you it's made of solid gold uh, it's about 30 centimeters tall so it's quite big it's very heavy it's about 2.2 kilograms so it's quite heavy I think the Queen always said yeah it's very heavy to kind of walk around with it on her head during the coronation and look at all those diamonds and those jewels isn't it beautiful apparently there are 444 precious stones and jewels in this crown so it's a lovely thing and you know what i think it's going to be a lot of fun drawing saint edward's crown right so shall we get a move on okay this is how draw with rob works just in case you've never seen one of these videos before lots of people say to me they don't think they're very good at drawing and i say do you know what everybody can draw some people need a little bit of help with the order that we do the drawing in. Do you know what? That's where I come in. Because what we're going to do with this drawing of St. Edward's crown, I'm going to break this drawing down into bite-sized pieces. So I'm going to draw a little bit on my piece of paper here. Then you can pause the video and you copy what I do, okay? Start me up again. I will draw the next bit, a little tiny bit of the drawing, okay? Pause the video. You draw. Start me up. I draw. You draw. I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw. And at the end, all of those jigsaw pieces that we draw in little bite-sized sessions, they will all come together and we will end up with a lovely drawing of St. Edward's crown that we're super, super proud of. This is what you're gonna need. You are gonna need a piece of paper. 
you're going to need a pen or a pencil, something to draw with. A bit later on, you might want to find something to colour with. If you haven't got any colours, don't worry about it. You can just colour it in with your pencil. That's absolutely fine. Shall we start? Right. Now, this crown, I was just practising drawing it just before I started recording, and I realised that actually it's very similar to a cake. <laughs> that sounds strange, doesn't it? But what I'm going to do, I'm going to treat it a bit like a drawing of a cake. I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to work my way up. I'm going to build it up in layers a bit like a cake. Okay. So the very first thing that I want you to do is nice and easy. Down at the bottom of your piece of paper, right at the bottom, I want you to draw a horizontal line. Like that, in the middle of the bottom of your piece of paper. Okay, nice and easy. Just above that line, maybe two centimetres away, we're going to draw, guess what, another horizontal line. Exactly the same length, like that. The only thing I'm worried about with this drawing is that I fit it all in. <laughs> it's quite tall, this crown, I told you, didn't I? It's about 30 centimetres tall. So it's quite a tall, it's, an, it's kind of deceptively tall, this crown. So I'm worried that I'm going to get to the top and I won't be able to fit the top bit in. But hopefully, I've sorted it out and I've worked it out correctly, but let's see, shall we? Right, the next thing I want you to do, we're gonna join up the ends of this crown, like that, in a sort of, end of this crown, end of these two lines, sorry, <laughs> in a sort of sausage shape, like that. So we've done a sort of oblong, but with curved ends, okay? And that is going to be the ermine trim that goes around the bottom of the crown, so like a fur trim at the bottom. I think that, I guess that makes it a bit more comfortable to wear for the wearer, so it's not just hard metal on your head. Okay, first bit done. Now this next bit, there's gonna be quite a lot of circles that we're gonna draw in this picture, and this is the first lot of circles, because what I want you to do, on top of that sausage shape, I want you to start drawing a line of tiny circles, like this, that just go along the top of our sausage shape. Now, you will have seen from that photo of the crown that it's a very elaborate object. And so when we're drawing an elaborate object, there's not really any shortcuts. We need to draw lots of little elements and shapes to make our crown look elaborate enough. Okay, so there's going to be lots of little detail here, which is really, really fun. It's all really easy and it's really fun when it comes to colouring because it gives you lots of little shapes to colour in, which is really, I really like doing that sort of thing. Okay. Next, we're gonna draw, coming out of the end of this circle on the left-hand side, we are gonna draw a vertical line coming up, a couple of centimeters, maybe slightly, slightly longer than that distance there. And you know what? We're gonna do exactly the same on the other end. So about that long, coming up from each end. Now I've used a brush pen. You can see here, one thing I should tell you, and I do say this in all of my videos, don't worry if it, if your drawing isn't perfect, okay? No drawing is perfect unless it's done by a robot, I guess. And that's what I love about drawing. You know, you can see my line at the bottom here is a bit wibbly wobbly. It's gone, my, the brush of my pen went a bit dry there. This line's not perfect at all. But that's what gives our drawing character. These little imperfections, these little happy accidents are what give our drawing character. And the worst thing you can do, in my opinion, with a drawing is to screw it up and start again. I don't really even like using a rubber, really. I just keep on drawing. If you make a mistake, just keep going. Often, I find, it's those little mistakes, they become my favorite parts of the drawing. They're the bits that I really like because they make it seem like it's got personality somehow. So don't worry at all if yours doesn't look exactly like mine. Okay, right, the next thing I want you to do, we're gonna draw another line of circles, exactly like the one we did at the bottom, like this. So try and make them roughly the same size. Don't worry if you don't do exactly the same number. If they're roughly the same size, people will think it's exactly the same number anyway, so don't worry about that at all. Try and make it as straight as you can, your line of circles. There we go, I'm gonna get this right, there we go. And then you can just, if your line doesn't quite meet up, just join it up like that. Okay, so there we go, the first two layers of our crown. Now we're gonna start, I think as we go up, we're gonna add the detail as we go. So the first bit of detail that I want you to add, right in the middle of this section here, I want you to draw a circle. Leave a bit of space around the circle, won't you? Because the reason I want you to leave a bit of space is we're gonna add some more circles 
going around that circle. And these are all going these are going to represent all the little diamonds and rubies and emeralds and things that decorate the crown, St Edward's crown. Because there are, as I said, there's 444 now. I haven't counted, I'm going to be honest. There won't be 444 on mine. Anyway, some of them will be around the back, but you know, you know what I mean. The next thing I want you to do, we're going to do a square this time, over here. A little square, let's do one here as well. We're going to try and make this symmetrical. I think the crown is pretty much symmetrical. And what should we do this time? Let's do a, we'll do a circle. You can do what you want here to a certain extent. Um, this might be quite fun, you know, you can add your own shaped jewels and things. But I'm going to do this. I'm going to add four little circles there and then maybe we'll do some really tiny ones in between. Like that. Tiny, 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 three tiny ones in between each one. Same on this side. Remember, we're going to try and keep it symmetrical. It just will end up looking a bit more kind of pleasing on the eye if it's symmetrical. There we go, some more jewels. This one, I think what we can do in the middle of these two squares, let's just add an X. That's a little trick that makes something look a bit more kind of jewelly. And in the middle of this one, why don't we make a square? Like that, lots of shapes going on. Fun. Okay, this next one, we're gonna, we've got just about enough space to fit another one in here. What we'll do here, we'll make it a bit different. We'll do sort of a an oblong like that shall we why not let's do that and then we could do an oval around it like so and then some more tiny tiny circles like that I'm just trying to keep these little bits varied you might not be 100% accurate to the actual crown but you get the impression it's already looking pretty, pr pretty sort of beautiful and crown-like, isn't it? I think anyway. Right, the next thing to do is we are going to. Right, I'm just thinking about this. Right, what I want you to do. This is going to look slightly unusual. I want you to kind of add a smiley mouth. So I want you. That's the center of our crown, right? Through that square shape there. That's that's the middle. So slightly to the left of that, I want you to draw a smiley shape like that that sort of there's a bit of a gap at the end and there's a little bit of a gap the, from the middle and the reason we're doing that well, all will become clear but we're going to add another one on that side roughly the same shape and you'll see why I'm doing that I'm trying to work out the best way to draw this next bit because it is a bit tricky and I think this is the easiest way to do it okay bear with bear with audience you'll see what I'm doing in a second Okay, now let me see, I'm going to change, I've got a thinner pen and I've got a thicker pen. I'm going back to my thinner one now, because what I want you to do, I want you to draw quite a big square on top of that bit, like that. So a square just kind of sitting there. Then we're going to draw another square inside it. It's not quite a square, is it? Mine is a bit more oblong. And then let's do another square inside that too squares within squares you see and then we'll draw just some little diagonal lines going out to the edges like so to make guess what a little jewel come on let's add some more circles sorry i'm oh. not sure about that i didn't ask you alexa why does alexa interrupt me she just says sorry thanks for the feedback thanks for the feedback she just said i didn't give her any alexa can you be quiet, please? Mm, she has been quiet now. <laughs> Sorry about that. Alexa always wanted to get involved. Thanks right. Did you hear that? She just sung thanks for your feedback to me. I've never heard this kind of behaviour from Alexa in all my life. <laughs> this is, I'm glad we've caught this on camera and I hope you picked on, up on that because I've never heard that before in my life. What is going on? <laughs> right, <laughs> where were we? Right, square. Okay, the next thing I want to do, coming out of the top of the square, we're going to sort of do a mirror image of these curves. Okay, we're going to come up and out, but I'm not going to go all the way around, I'm just going to stop there. So about halfway. And then I'm going to do the same in mirror image on that side, about halfway, and then we're going to join across the top there to make a shape like that. Now, 
this is the tricky bit because we are going to draw a shape like that on each side as well so this is how we start we come out and up in a curve like that we come out and down in a curve like that then we join them up can you see it's like that but on the side let's do the same over here out and up out and down join them up there we go you probably are starting to recognize this part of the crown now guess what more jewels they do not leave any space uncovered by jewels in the makers of this crown so what we're going to do we're going to do a little square just on each little arm coming out like so we'll do one down here as well to make it symmetrical and then around each one come on little circles we'll just surround it with circles so it's like a little diamond encrusted jewel of some sort now if you then can if you compare this to the actual crown you'll see mine is much I've simplified it quite a lot because obviously these diamonds are very very intricately cut in the real crown and we haven't got time to draw it too accurately today but you get you get the idea here there we go okay now these two sections here they have something I think it's called a fleur de lis which is a shape if any of you are in the scouts or in the girl guides or anything like that you might have seen this fleur de lis shape on your uniforms or on your badges and they look like this so what we're going to do we'll start on this side we're going to keep that curve it's going to continue upwards and then we're going to curve back down come in and then sort of swirl out like that so it's almost like an s shape okay let's do it on the other side too let's kind of keep this going together each side so we come up we're doing mirror image remember we go out and we go in now that shape that side is a lot tighter see I've mucked that up a bit because I've left not enough space on this side but it's gonna be all right let's do this one first the one that I've done properly <laughs> we're gonna come in here we're gonna go up and we're gonna go round let's do it here now I'm gonna have to do this very thin in up and round it's fine it works see what I mean about making mistakes just keep going we're adding personality and quirk to our drawing okay the next part of the fleur-de-lis shape we're going to come up from here and we're going to go to a little point and then we're going to come back down so like a little sort of leaf shape at the top up to a point and back down okay then we're going to try and draw a mirror image of this shape over here so we come out down and around in up down back to here and then finally a vertical line there and that's that kind of edge of the crown okay let's do it again over here we're gonna go up down around up back in around down all the way up here and then a vertical to join back up and there we go the base of the crown now that was tricky feel free to pause watch it again watch it a few times me doing that and you will get the hang of it that's so much thinner isn't it it's fine it's fine Rob it's fine <laughs> let's add a few more jewels I'm gonna make this a bit simpler because we don't have much space in here we'll just add a circle there a circle there let's add a square in the middle like that we can add a border on this again remember what I said these little details they all sort of join together to make uh, make your drawing look really kind of ornamental I'm just gonna I'm making this up as I go along feel free to do the same add any little details that you want I'm gonna add three little circles there that say they're diamonds on that side over here one two three over here one two three there we go um, I think we're gonna have to add some down here too what should we do let's have a look at the real thing okay I'm gonna add a big I think they might be pearls or something we do a big one in the middle and a couple of little ones like that wow it's looking pretty good isn't it pretty ornamental already okay now we are going to draw let's start with 
Let's do, I'm just trying to work this out. Okay, I'm gonna do it like this. Coming up from this center bit, you can see we've almost got like a tabletop here. Coming out of that tabletop, I want you to draw a rectangle. Up on both sides and then joined across like that. Now I've done this a bit shorter than it is in real life. It's a bit taller, but I, again, I'm worried about fitting everything in at the top, so I'm just making it a bit shorter. Then what we're gonna do, we're gonna add two vertical lines going up like that, leaving about a centimeter gap from the end. And inside each of those gaps, we're gonna add some more circles, much like those ones we drew at the beginning of this drawing. Like that, we're gonna fill it up with a tower of circles on each side. Again, lots of detail. It is the detail that will make this drawing beautiful. Okay, in this section of the crown, we're gonna add a square in the middle, like so. Let's do one of our little X's, like we did down here. Uh, then let's do, let me see. We'll do another square around that, like so. And then let's just add two more. They're sort of rectangles, not quite square. So we've got three rectangles, one with our X square in the middle. And then on this one, we're gonna add a circle right in the middle of each one. And then one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Like so. And then do you know what? You can add just some little semicircles coming out of that middle one. It's just a slightly different detail on that one. There we go. Pretty cool. That's that section of it. Now, this next bit is quite tricky, but this is what really, this is kind of, for me, this is the signature part of this particular crown. Because what we're gonna do, we're gonna do those bits that sort of come out the sides like that, which really make it kind of look like the crown that we have seen on our, you know, letterboxes and that kind of thing, the insignia of the crown. It's almost like a logo, isn't it, this crown? So what we're gonna do, we are going to come, let's do it coming out of this bit of the fleur de lis here. I want you to come, first of all, we start going up, then we curl out, we come around like so, and then we head back into that part of the drawing, okay? Now we're gonna do the same on the other side. I'm gonna try and make this symmetrical. It's quite important that we get it as symmetrical as we can. So it's coming out of here, up, round, in like that. That's not too bad. There we go. So you want it to look pretty much the same on both sides. The good thing about these brush pens is that with that thicker line, I can just tweak it to make it even more symmetrical. Okay, now, what I want you to do next is, we are going to, let me think about this, I'm gonna just switch to my thinner pen. And I'm gonna follow that line just, just a few millimeters away to make it a bit thicker, all the way around. So it's like a solid sort of bendy bar of gold coming up and around like that. And then, I'm gonna add lots of our circles all the way round. Should I go into super speed mode to do this? You don't need to see me do this, okay? Yeah, I'm gonna go into super speed mode. Three, two, one, here we go. There we go, I've added all the circle bits now. They've all kind of come around nicely to form the shape of our, our, our <laughs> crown. Now, let me think, I think, that's all right, that's all right. I'm gonna leave it like that, I'm gonna leave it like that. I was wondering whether to put in, yeah, let's do that actually. We'll just put in a little line there, joining that up, because what we're gonna draw next, there's this kind of, do you remember there's this lovely purple velvet kind of cap in the middle of all the gold and all the jewels? I guess that's kind of the comfortable bit when you're wearing it. But it, it's really, really a signature, again, a signature part of this crown. In fact, let me go my thick pen and that is gonna we're gonna imagine that's come up from here comes around here and it just sort of disappears in behind there like that and it's made of as I said sort of velvet so it's sort of a softer material it's a nice contrast to all that kind of hard gold and metal 
and that's just gonna be hidden in behind all the gold and jewels there right now we are coming to the top towards the top of our crown what we need to do next is let's draw just two little lines coming out of the top like that we're going to build this up bit by bit i think that's the easiest way to do this at the top of that we are going to add a nice square like so okay in the middle of that let's draw another square and let's make it one of our x squares for a little jewel in there okay next we're going to draw an oblong coming out at right angles of that square let's go we'll go quite we'll go quite a long way out we'll go to about there i think i'm going to do the same on the other side i think there's going to be a lot of pausing in this video so i'm going quite quickly you might need to pause me just to catch up here and there okay in these oblongs we're going to add some more of our circles the circles are kind of the signature graphic device in this drawing they sort of appear all over this drawing and actually they sort of help to hold the whole thing together i think okay next we are let me see we're going to go up we're going to do a vertical oblong now and we're going to add some of our circles into that too so we've kind of created a bit of a kind of cross shape there let's add a couple down there as well why not now behind this big cross shape we're going to join it all up with a big circle so we're going to draw a quarter circle there it's going to carry on through there go behind same on this side quarter circle go in behind and that's kind of like this golden orb which sits in the top part of our crown okay we are getting there now we are really getting there now the next thing to do the top part of this crown we're going to carry on that horizontal line make it a little bit longer maybe two centimeters something like that and what we're going to do now we're going to do another one of these kind of cross shapes here these kind of funny cross shapes so what we're going to do we'll start going up in a curve like that on both sides just like so okay then we're going to come out and down on this side like that so if you think about it it's kind of like a leaf shape there it might be a nice way to think about it then we're going to go straight up then we're going to do another one of our leaf shapes this time sort of going that way then we are going to go horizontally across like that then we are coming down here like so up again make another leaf shape up there straight down before we join the final thing up to make our funny little cross shape on top there fun bit now put a circle in the middle right in the middle of it all let's do another circle inside with a slightly thinner line and then guess what we're gonna do uh, actually first of all I'm gonna add a really nice bit of detail we're gonna do a very thin echo of that shape inside so we create a nice little thin border mine's a bit shaky there because so i'm pressing very lightly with my pen so i want a very thin line there we go so we've created kind of a frame within our cross and then within that we're going to add lots of little tiny circle jewels just like that do one there and sort of three at each end one there three at each end nice now this crown it is a bit like a cake that you just can't stop adding toppers to <laughs> because there's another little bit here right at the top first of all let's do this this is a fun this is a fun bit we're just going to add two little kind of lines coming out of each side that we don't join up at the end the reason we don't join them up at the end is because we're going to add a little circle at the end of each one just like that and then from these circles there are two sort of little golden teardrop shapes like that that hang that hang down and i'm sure everything on this crown has there is some kind of symbology everything kind of represents something 
I probably should have done a bit more research to tell you about that symbology, but I didn't. And I am very sorry about that. <laughs> Maybe you can look it up. If you're doing this at school, get your teachers to look it up. That's what they're there for, right? <laughs> now the final bit of this crown, the topping, the, 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 to top the whole thing off, we're gonna add another circle right at the top like that. It's a golden circle. And on top of that circle, just cause we don't know when to finish, we're gonna add another little tiny circle like so. And they are made of gold. So there we go. There is a crown. Isn't that beautiful? So much detail. It's time to color it in now. And in coloring it in, you can add even more detail. The really fun part of this, I think, is the colouring because, you know what, you can go for the traditional. I'm going to probably keep mine pretty traditional. I will do a golden crown with the emeralds and the ruby. Uh, I don't know if they are rubies. I think there's some topaz. I don't know what there are. Lots of different jewels. But I'm going to stick to the actual colour scheme of St. Edward's crown with the purple hat and all that kind of stuff. But you know what, you can do whatever you like. You have so many little shapes to colour in here. You could make yours totally multicoloured, rainbow coloured if you want. And that might be so nice. And I really can't wait to see your drawings because they are going to be beautifully coloured. I just know it. I'm going to go into super speed mode to colour mine in. Of course I am. I always do. Um, and I will be back here in 20 or 30 seconds. And when I get back, I will tell you a few of the little techniques I've used in the colouring. Um, so you can choose whether you want to do that as well. Right, you ready? Here we go. Three, two, one. Let's do this. So there we go. There is my coloured in St. Edward's crown. Doesn't it look nice? I must admit, I'm super pleased with it. Oh, I just noticed a bit. I didn't do these little bits up here. Now what I do, I use, I've got this really nice colour here. What do they call it? Let's see, it's called blue, it's called light aqua, this colour. And I really like it. When Whenever you have something white, if you just use this as the kind of the little shadow color it just really really works especially when you're doing like diamonds things like that just add a little bit sort of over to one side and i just think it really makes even though it's kind of greeny blue it makes whatever is white or sort of you know in the case of diamonds or sort of silvery white it really helps them kind of sparkle and i think it looks really nice but actually i think this is this is a really nice drawing i'm very pleased with this one do you see what i mean about all the detail adding all these different colors here to the jewels and little bits and pieces it just really makes your drawing seem like a really rich and a really really full drawing so i'm very very pleased with this one what can i tell you right you will see so the gold i used lots of yellow pencil and then i gradually added sort of darker and darker shades of orange and even some sort of dark brown and some reddish brown in there as well just for the shadow just to make it look a little bit rounded especially with the with the orb up here and these little bits here but also around the kind of the base by just making it darker on each side it just helps to make it kind of feel a bit more rounded i think I added some little black dots here in the ermine, um, the fur lined, the ermine in, in the uh, the crown's base. Um, and yeah, lots of different jewels. I try to keep it quite close to the real colours of the jewels. So there's some greens, some emeralds in there, and then these yellow ones and the pink ones. And there was one, I think there's only one blue one that I could see in my photograph. Um, so I try to kind of keep it roughly. Uh, you know as per the actual St. Edward's crown but I'm hoping that you guys have gone crazy with your colours especially in the jewels because um, I really really want to see them and maybe you've even made up your own jewel shapes that kind of thing that's what I hope um, and then with this velvet cap in the background I made it much darker towards the bottom and again what when you do dark colours behind these kind of these golds it makes it kind of recede it makes it go back backwards which makes the golds pop out in the front so yes i'm very very pleased with it and this is the actual crown well not my drawing but the actual crown is the one that's going to be put on king charles iii's head on the 6th of may over there in westminster abbey 
which is very exciting, isn't it? These these traditional things that have, don't happen very often. It'll be, uh, you know, we'll be able to witness this on our television, so that will be exciting. So listen. Oh no, I nearly forgot. The thing that I always say is one of the most important parts of our drawing. We need to sign it, right? We need to sign our drawings. Where shall I sign mine? Let's do it down here. We do the full signature, shall we? Rob Bidolf. There we go. And you know what? I'm going to put the date on 2023 because this is coronation year. Um, so you make sure you sign your drawings, people. Also, make sure you post them on social media using this hashtag draw with Rob. That way I will get to see it. If you're watching on Facebook, you can just comment below with a picture of your drawings and I'll get to see that too. And I really, really want to see all your lovely drawings this week. What else can I tell you? Make sure you subscribe to my newsletter. Um, that way you get all the latest news, Rob news. So you get live event news. Maybe I'll be coming to a town near you soon and you can come and meet me and you can draw with me live and hear me tell you some stories and that kind of thing. That would be fun, wouldn't it? I also tell you when the newest Draw With Rob videos are coming out on that newsletter. So sign up for that. It's totally free. You won't get spammed, I promise. Um, make sure if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you are subscribed to my channel and you've got your notifications turned on. That way you will uh, get, you'll be told as soon as a new video comes out. Um, and that's about it. Thank you so much for drawing along with me today. If you've been drawing in school, I hope you've all had a nice time. It's a nice bit of golden time, isn't it? Drawing with Rob. Um, thank you teachers for using my videos. Um, I'm gonna be back very soon with another Draw With Rob video. In the meantime, guys, keep those pencils sharpened, keep on reading, keep on drawing, and I will see you again very soon. Goodbye everyone.